I just missed my train. <laughs> it's pulling away. And I literally missed it by about 30 seconds. So that means you get a Mark Reviews opinion piece while I wait for the next train. <clears throat> I'm here at the American Fork Front Runner Station. And the biggest news of the day here locally in Utah uh, yesterday was the changes announced to BYU Broadcasting. And as a former employee of BYU Broadcasting, I do have some opinions on the matter. Uh, first and foremost, interesting to note, um, well, okay, if you're not familiar with the, the situation, first and foremost, they are announcing the consolidation of several of their broadcast entities. So, BYU TV, as you know it from, you know, Studio C, perhaps Granite Flats, maybe even their new show, Extinct, um, BYU TV will continue. They've had some success with some of their shows, some of their formats, and they want to try to continue that. So, you'll see new content, um, you know, original shows, etc. Um, one of my friends, Austin Craig, just launched a show on that channel called The New Creatives. So I think you'll see more things like that. Um, and that's probably a good thing. But they also had several other channels. So KBYU, Channel 11, here locally, on your digital converter box or your cable, whatever. Um, that was a PBS affiliate, and they announced that they are no longer going to maintain that. Um, they have had that KBYU call sign for 70 years, and they're giving it up. So, that's an interesting thing. And now, when I was at BYU, and I was part of the um, student news organization, called it uh, BYU Daily News at Noon, um, every day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Friday, we had a student-produced newscast. And that was primarily for people in the broadcast journalism program to hone their skills and learn how to be local news reporters. Now that's as exciting as it sounds because sometimes uh, the quality was not incredible or people would mess up on camera or what. That's fine. That's part of the point. And that is the one thing they're keeping from Channel 11 and presumably moving it to BYU TV, which is a little bit weird because uh, BYU TV has a national and even an international audience, particularly in North America. I don't know how much of an appetite there is for student-produced local news. You know, local pet store hosts adoption. Okay, it wasn't always that bad. It was, it was like, you know, local issues affecting um, Provo, affecting Salt Lake. And I don't know how much interest or appetite there's going to be for that nationally. So we'll see how long that lasts. But that's an important outlet for the people in that broadcast journalism program. If I were to predict what I think is going to happen, I think you're going to see that eventually just move online and have an even smaller audience than it currently does. Or, and this is what I would hope, but I kind of doubt, you may see that the BYU Daily News turns into a more national and international focused program. And instead of, you know, local reporters going out and interviewing people locally, and that is the story, they may just go out to get a local tilt or local angle on that international story. Something more like Vox News or Beam News or something. I could see that. But um, you also have you now, so, so set all of that aside, on the radio side of things, some interesting things are happening. BYU Radio is something that another of my friends works for. And they have had some good success on Sirius XM satellite radio. But 
that's a very specific audience and it's probably hard to find that station. So what they're going to do now is blitz out their KBYU FM Classical 89 station uh, here in Utah, which is the only classical radio station in the state of Utah. And they're going to take that station, the call sign, the signal, and uh, just turn that into BYU radio. So Classical 89, they, they give up that station and now they have uh, BYU radio broadcast over the air locally here in Utah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about that, but I do take issue with them getting rid of the only classical radio station in Utah. Now, I grew up in Massachusetts where WCRB, Classical 102.5 WCRB, which has now moved to a, a non-profit wavelength, I think it's at like 90.1 or something like that, their classical radio station was phenomenal. And I've been telling the people at Classical 89 for years that they need to stop just taking ad nauseum the, the playlists requested by their wealthy donors and that they needed to play like popular or, um, you know, more, more uh, generally accepted or um, generally recognized classical music. They, they needed to play the things that people recognized from Looney Tunes and whatever, like the, the good classical music and not, you know, Oboe Concerto Number no. 8 in E-flat minor by someone you've never heard of. Because people would tune in to have kind of background music or to calm down on their commute or something like that, but no one was connected with that radio station. And they were kept afloat by donations and only donations. Um, they, they weren't selling ads on Classical 89, nor would anyone buy them. So, financially, this all makes perfect sense. These changes that are taking place. Um, but culturally, this is a huge blow for the state of Utah. This is the only classical radio station. Their answer for it was, oh, a lot of, you know, classical music is available to stream online already or on satellite radio or whatever. How many people are doing that? No, if you're in your car and someone cut you off and you want to run them off the road, you need to flip on Classical 89 to calm yourself down a little bit, recenter, refocus. That doesn't exist anymore. You can't just turn on a, a normal radio in the state of Utah and listen to Classical 89. Well, you can right now, but in a couple of months, that's going to go away. And that's a problem. Someone needs to step in. And so here's an opportunity for someone. <laughs> if you want to like launch a Kickstarter or something like that and try to set up your own classical radio station, you know, here's an opportunity to do that. And you could even, if you get to a point where you're stable, you could turn it into a commercial venture. And I think you'd probably have enough business. There are enough people listening to classical music to make something like that viable. And if, if uh, I, I could point to one thing I think that Classical 89 suffered from, it was, it was trying too hard to appease their aging demographic. If you looked at their demographic info, it was probably closer to age 100 than age 50. Um, and, and literally when your listenership is dying off and you're not getting new listeners, that's a problem. But Utah needs to have a classical station. It needs to. So someone will step up. Now there's already a petition circulating that I've seen. I checked it this morning. It's almost at 5,000 signatures already. That'll probably continue. Petitions will do little, though. Like if, if you're outraged over this, I would ask you, when was the last time you listened to Classical 89? Um, for me, it was yesterday, but I'm not most people. So when was the last time you listened? And even more than that, when was the last time you donated? Because if you can't answer you know, recently to either of those questions, then can you really be outraged? I don't know. One last note in memoriam, my beloved BYU Television International, 
where I worked for several years, uh, made great friendships, honed a lot of skills, editing video and audio, etc. Um, they announced that they will be focusing on Spanish language material, not just Spanish and Portuguese like they were before, um, and that it would be focused on U.S.-based customers. Now, I, I feel sad and sorry for the people who live in Latin America, where BYU Television International had been targeting before, because when I was there, we received notes and letters and you know, social media posts of gratitude from people all over Latin America thanking us for the quality, family-friendly content that we brought into their homes and really one of the only alternatives to some of the other entertainment that they had. And that's going away. And that's, for me, the greatest personal loss in all of this. And, and I'm sad to see it go. It had great potential, and it was changing lives around the world. So they said, you know, they're not eliminating it completely. They're retrenching and refocusing on their strategy. So I wish them well. Now, in general, to sum up, I'm encouraged, and I'm heartened, and I'm, I won't say I'm happy, I guess, but I, I am happy that, for once, finally, someone at BYU Broadcasting has the guts to rock the boat, to treat this more like a true business venture, rather than pretending that it's a, you know, a, a private project funded by wealthy donors that you have to kowtow to. No. It, this this is really how businesses are run. So change is painful. Um, no one likes it when their personal pet project or status quo that they've been working on for years gets affected by something like this. But in the end, I'm optimistic that by retooling, refocusing, circling the wagons, in a sense, uh, by consolidating some of these ventures, BYU Broadcasting will emerge as a more legitimate media outlet and will be able to compete with some of the, the big players out there. So, mixed bag. It's not all bad. Um, and time will tell. I think we need to be patient and let things run their course. That being said, if you have opinions on this, share them. Now's the time because nothing has actually been done yet. It's all just been announced. So, I will leave a link to that petition in the description below if you want to try to save Classical 89 or, hey, if you're a young enterprising individual and you want to set up a crowdfunding page and uh, you want to try to set up your own classical radio station in Utah, you know, I'll, I'll provide you with, with some free advice um, and you know, power to you. I, I think there's room for that. but. That's, that's a lot. I covered everything. I covered the gamut. still have a lot of good friends that work for BYU Broadcasting in various aspects. I'm glad that this announcement said that everyone would be keeping their jobs. They'd just be redeployed. I hope that's the case. I've worked in the corporate world long enough to know that that may be the case initially. Um, but if they can't find a, a place for people, then this could ultimately cost jobs. Um, I hope that they really are able to redeploy, retrench, retool, and focus in on the strategies that are going to work the best. Because that would be great. Time will tell. Okay, that is a long enough video for today. <laughs> Click subscribe by clicking over here on this train platform. And on this side, check out some of the other videos that I've done. If you've made it to this point, thank you. Thank you for watching and share your opinion in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. Thanks.